Hello there beautiful people of the internet, hope you guys are having a stellar weekend and today we are going to do a Q&A. Last night I reached out to you guys on Instagram and if you don't follow me on Instagram it's at the Mizco and I asked you guys to send through all your design and freelancing questions so we can answer all those burning questions in this video. So without further ado, let's get right into it guys. So the first question is, as a junior designer, how can I handle my clients better? I'm not able to give them ideas on the spot. So with this question, I think it is all about time and experience. Don't have the expectation that you are going to have decades of ammunition that you can just go firing off at a client. You need to understand the more work you do, the more resources and more examples and case studies that you can refer to. Spend the time and the focus on actually getting as much work as you can under your belt. So over time, you have all these references that you can turn to whenever a client asks you a question. Now, another thing that you can do to implement into your workflow to get more ideas is to read other people's case studies. So there are lots of case studies about Airbnb, about Twitter, about how Airbnb grew to having millions of customers, talking about Shopify, talking about all these great startups and how they have grown. If you read those case studies, you can start to use those as actual references when you're talking to clients because a client might ask you, well, how do we grow our customer base from 1,000 to 10,000? And then you might remember, oh, I read this article about how Airbnb growth hacked their way from 1,000 to 100,000 customers. By taking photos of the places that people could stay at themselves instead of having the actual owner taking the crappy photo on a potato because those were terrible photos and the photos are the actual spotlight, the things that people look at when they want to decide to stay at a place. So these ideas you can read about and use as inventory. Now, next question. How can a junior designer become an expert during his self-learning guidance? Even for myself, I am a self-taught designer. But there is a saying, you don't know what you don't know. So yes, you can learn as much as you can as a self-taught designer, but if you wanna become great, if you wanna become a world-class designer, you have to get yourself out into the industry and learn from other people as well. I can guarantee you every great designer out there, whether they're business driven, creatively driven, whatever they're great at, they worked in the industry and they've worked from world-class people and individuals themselves. They learned from the best, they took the best things, they made it unique to their own, and then they became a world-class designer. You can't become a world-class by working by yourself at home. It just does not work like that. Next question. What mental challenges did you have to face with family slash relatives when pursuing your creative career? Now, this is a great, a great question. Growing up in a Chinese migrant family came with all the stereotypical expectations of becoming doctor or lawyer, but sadly, I didn't meet any of those expectations. Now, here is how I was able to overcome some of those mental challenges. I think we first need to understand the reason why our parents wanted us to become a doctor or become a lawyer and it's become this stereotypical expectation is because they simply don't want us to go through the same struggles that they had to go through while building the family, while struggling without much financial support. So in their mind, in their generation, the way to overcome this challenge is to get a high paying job. And that is generally with a lawyer or a doctor title. Now, very early on in my very own career or my personal interest, I was already making websites and already making a couple of hundred dollars on the side purely for fun. So I think that helps me build leverage. Now the second part to overcoming mental challenges, because obviously throughout this process, there was a bit of back and forth, a bit of friction, a bit of struggle. But I'm the type of person who would really try to focus on the glass being half full instead of the glass being half empty. Yes, I could keep seeing my relationship with my parents as a way that we're trying to butt heads and I'm trying to do this and you're not letting me do this. But instead, I will hear them out and then I would simply put all my focus, all my energy in doing my line of work, in pursuing my passion to prove to them that, no, what I'm doing has a potential. It has a future and there is an opportunity in this. And I think over time, once again, because I was able to deliver those results, because I was able to help them understand you don't need to be a doctor, you don't just need to be a lawyer to have a successful future, 
You can be push pushing pixels. You can be designing websites. I think that helped them to understand the opportunity and the industry that I was working in. Now, next question. How do you balance different roles? Courses, handling, agency, ETC. Now, I am no superhero. I am no super being, even though my tagline is helping you become a superhero. But the thing about my process is that there are two parts. One, progression over perfection. I don't strive for perfection. I strive for progression. I strive to get things out the door, get something tangible into the hands of my customers, into the World Wide Web for people to use, and then I can iterate. I don't have the need or a bit of that expectation to craft it until it is beautiful, it is perfect, because I come from a very lean UX and product background. I come from an industry where we ship 10 different A-B test experiments on one design. I come from a background where we ship new features literally every single fortnight. So I have become so trained and accustomed to failure. Like I'm very okay with it. I'm very okay with receiving constructive criticism. I'm very okay with people telling me, hmm, Ms. Cope, that's not great. Here is some feedback. I take all that on and then I improve it, right? I don't spend months behind closed doors working on something and then maybe release it four months later. I get something out the next week. I get the feedback and I iterate. So I work very quickly and I focus on progression over perfection. Next question. What books would you recommend for one starting a freelance business? You need to make sure that you can think strategically about your design. So Hooked by Nur Ayl. He does a really good book about how to craft habit forming products. One of my favorite books. The second book I would recommend over to you is Contagious. This was one of the first marketing books that I read, which helped me understand the concepts of how to become contagious, how to become viral, how to launch a product that people talk about, right? So that's another great book. Third book would be Lean Startup. As a designer, so many designers are so precious about interactions, polish, designing really good experiences. Like that's what we should be striving for. But realistically guys, realistically, what companies can actually get to the market is by far what your expectations are. What a business actually gets out to market is a two week sprint worth of work, right? And then once you get that piece out of a uh, piece of work out the door, then you learn the feedback, you iterate and, you, and it's a continuous cycle. So the book that I would highly recommend you to read is Lean Startup. This book will teach you the agile methodologies of how real businesses operate. Because if you are a designer who thinks that whatever you design is going to go out the door, you aren't really delivering value to your customer, to your client, because you're not setting the right expectation. When your client gets all this work that you have designed for them, now they're dealing with major headaches of trying to figure out who is going to build all this, how are we going to get it out the door, and it's just more work that they should be handling. This is actually increasing the chance of failure. So what you need to understand is, you need to understand product management. How do you take a big project, break it down to chunks? How do you, as a designer, design small aspects of it, give it to your client, get that to the developers, get it out the door, and then you chip away at this project bit by bit, instead of giving them a massive project that they hand over to the developers. That is not how a great UX or product designer should work. We consider the design. We consider the product, like the business side. We also consider the actual management of the entire project as well. So those three books, Hooked, Contagious, and Lean Startup. Next question, what are your goals in the next five years? Now, my key focus in 2021 and moving forward is the designership. The vision of this designership community is a, de a design school where you can learn very practical, very tactical skills in short, bite courses. There are no weekly, monthly courses that you need to sit through and try so hard to just get to the end of it. We're going to be teaching you tactical things that you can learn in a couple of hours and actually get out the door and apply it in your real life workflow. That is the goal of our educational side. And we also have a community side where designers come together from all around the world to learn, meet, share and grow with one another. That is my key focus of the next five years, which is to really build up the designership into a global brand. 
What advice would you give a new designer looking to eventually start a UI UX agency? Now my tip for you here is every project that you work on, tie it to a business outcome. If you're designing an app, what is the outcome of the app? It should not be to make it look like a dribble worthy shot. I don't care about how beautiful it is. I care about how many messages are sent through the app, how, how many users we are on board by the end of the month. I wanna know with every project that you work on, what is that business outcome that you are working towards? Because over the years, you will then have a portfolio of case studies that you can tell prospects that your work is worth $50,000 because you can guarantee them customers, you can guarantee them high conversion rates, you can guarantee them whatever it might be. Instead of saying, I can guarantee you a beautiful design. I can guarantee you that this will resonate with customers. I don't care about the fluffy things. I care about how you can impact their business positively. Next question and final question. As a self-taught UI designer, how do you know if it's okay to start working as a freelancer with little experience? In life, we grow up asking for permission. We always ask for permission to do something. In the business world, right? In the business world, that is flipped upside down. You should be asking for forgiveness instead of asking for permission. In business, you need to be proactive. You need to instead change your mindset from, wait, should I ask if this is okay to be a freelancer? Don't worry about getting permission. The ones who succeed are the ones who just go for it. There are no questions that need to be asked. There is no permission that needs to be granted. You are in control of your own business. You are in control of your own life. You make the decisions that you need to make so you can get to the vision of where you want to be. So don't let other people tell you what you should be doing. Just go ahead, just learn, strive, and keep pushing forward. All right, guys, hopefully you learned a thing or two in this very quick Q&A. And if you have any further questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Now, if you were still watching this video, there are some juicy courses that I will be releasing over the next six to 12 months. Make sure to check the link in the description to get early bird access. All right, guys, I hope you have a stellar weekend and I hope you guys start smashing goals and I will see you in another video very soon.